Hello, everybody. I'm Asako Hota from Night in Japan. As one of examples using this new OECD QSO assessment framework, I would like to talk about evaluating the biodegradation of two chemicals using one of models of episodes developed by US EPA. As you all know, the OECD QSO assessment framework called QAF is a systematic and harmonized framework for the regulatory assessment of QSO models, predictions, and results based on multiple predictions. The QAF system consists of model and prediction checklists to confirm each assessment element based on the model and prediction principles. This is the background for the assessment. In this case study, we aim to assess the biodegradability of target substances using the QSER and the risk assessment framework of the chemical substances control law in Japan, referred to as CSCL, by using the checklist of QAF. Two chemicals were selected, one with and one without multiple experimental data. When it comes to QSA2, we used biodegradation probability program version 4.11 known as BioWin. BioWin is part of prediction tools in the estimation program's interface suite, which estimates physical and chemical properties and environmental fate. BioWin consists of seven predictive models and estimates the probability for the rapid aerobic biodegradation of organic chemicals in the presence of mixed populations of environmental microorganisms. We usually employ BioWin 5 and 6. These models serve to assess a compound's biodegradability in the Japanese Meteor-Ready Biodegradation Test, which is equal to OECD Test Guideline 301C. The models are based on fragment constants developed through multiple linear and nonlinear regression analyses. According to OECD 301C pass criterion, which requires 60% of maximum theoretical oxygen demand due to test substances, the BioE model interprets probabilities greater than 0.5 as predicting ready degradability and values less than 0.5 as not predicting ready degradability. For your information, the discussions of the presence and absence of degradation products should be conducted outside, the, of the, outside of the QAF scope, but still within the context of the risk assessment. As our target substances, we picked up these two chemicals. As the case one, we chose the chemical indicating on the left side when we can't get any appropriate experimental data, we assess the risk of a chemicals with QSA prediction results. As a case 2, we chose a chemical indicating on the right side. In case we can get any appropriate experimental data, we use QSA prediction results as one of supporting information. Before introducing the model checklist, I'd like to explain the model checklist referring to BioWin 5 and 6. These are assessment elements for a model checklist. Outcomes of all items other than 5.1 highlighted in red become fulfilled. Overall, BioWin 5 and 6 are acceptable for the intended purposes. The reason why 5.1 is considered as not fulfilled is because those models are built statistically, not mechanistically. According to Principle 5, in the OECD principles for the model validation, a QSOS should be associated with a mechanistic interpretation, if possible. Furthermore, according to guidance, for some regulatory purposes and with a valid justification, models that don't fulfill all assessment elements can also be accepted. Hence, overall BIOM 5 and 6 are considered to be acceptable for our intended purposes. These are overall assessment elements 
for the prediction checklist and our results. In the prediction checklist, outcome uncertainty level and weight of the assessment elements were considered for the evaluation. In the next several slides, I'd like to explain the details of each assessment element and how we concluded each outcome in assessment for this substance. For 1.1 to 1.3, we are required to ensure input is correct depending on the complexity of models. The violin uses a single input only smiles to run the model. All the necessary properties to determine the chemical structure, including the chemical name, gas number, and smiles are available. So we put her field as 1.1 and 1.2 outcomes. The purpose of the 1.3 assessment element is to evaluate the reliability of manually input parameters. This element should be assessed for models utilizing direct input beyond the chemical structure. Given that Byron relies solely on a single input, specifically SMILES, for model ex execution, we consider the outcome of this element as not applicable. The purpose of 2.1 and 2.2 assessment elements are to make sure the substance under analysis is within the applicability domain of the model. The BioWay model should not be used to evaluate structural isomers because the BioWay model employs a group or fragment contribution approach that assumes that the contribution of each fragment in the molecule are linearly and non-linearly additive. Moreover, the binary module should not be employed to evaluate structural isomers since it utilizes a group or fragment contribution approach that assumes linear and nonlinear additivity of each fragment contributions in the molecule. Items 3.1 through 3.6 are used to evaluate the reliability of the forecast from multiple views. 3.1 is about the reproducibility of the model and 3.2 is about the performance of the model. As BioWing is publicly available and can be downloaded from the website, and the prediction accuracy of the planning and validation sets are generally above 70%, we consider the prediction performance to be adequate for the intended use. Moving on to 3.3, the target chemical was evaluated to see if they are within a reasonable range compared to the range defined in the training set. The molecular weight of the substance under analysis falls within the range of the maximum and minimum values of the training set compounds. Additionally, the structure fragments present in the substance are included in the 42 fragments defined based on the training set. In all predictions using the model, probabilities greater than or equal to 0.5 are interpreted as indicating readily degradable, while values less than 0.5 suggest not readily degradable. For the substance under analysis, BioWin 5 predicts 0.46 and BioWin 6 predicts 0.81, categorizing the substance as readily degradable. These prediction values fall within the applicability domain of the model's training set. Furthermore, for 3.4, an evaluation of the predicted results for similar substances was performed. The predicted results for the analytes are shown on this slide. This is the biodegradability results of exp experiment values and bioin predictions for the target chemical and analogs. The analytes were predicted to be readily degradable, and the predictions were found to be within the applicable range of the model training set. Furthermore, analogs containing tertiary alcohols were estimated not to be readily biodegradable, while the other analogs were estimated to be readily biodegradable. This point is described in the 3.4. For 
This item evaluates how the model predictions consider the effect of metabolism and its products. Biowin was not included because it does not account for metabolic and catabolic factors. For 3.6, this item evaluates the consistency of information when multiple model predictions are used to predict the property of interest, and when additional information on the same or related properties, such as experimental results, is used. In this case, there are no data on the biodegradability of the substance under analysis. We concluded 3.5 and 3.6 outcomes are not applicable. Items 4.1 to 4.3 are intended to check whether the characteristics predicted by the QSA model are consistent with those required by the regulation. About 4.1, the regulatory framework may directly indicate specific criteria for the acceptable use of QSAs. The QSA variation of the substance under analysis is evaluated to determine whether it falls within that acceptable range. If not, it is expected that the predicted values comply with these additional criteria for its use to be considered acceptable. If reliable experimental results in accordance with OECD test guidelines 301C are not available, it is stated in our published risk assessment guidance under CSCL that the predicted results from the QSA tool should be used as one of the reference materials. Since the technical guidance confirms the criteria for the acceptable use of QSA in CSCL, outcome is set to fulfilled and uncertainty is set to low. About 4.2. Especially when the regulation refers to a specific test guideline, the model is an item to ensure that the experimental results obtained according to the specified test guideline are included in the training set. Since the endpoint for BioIN 5 and 6 are all ECD test guideline 301C, and the regulation requires that tests be performed, performed according to the latest version of the OECD test guideline 301 series. The predicted properties correspond to mandatory properties. Therefore, outcome was set to fulfilled and uncertainty to low. 4.3 is the item to check if the predicted value is within the threshold and at the required level of confidence especially when a threshold exists in the regulation. In this case, BioM5 estimated a probability of 0.64 and BioM6 estimated a probability of 0.80. In both models, the probabilities were estimated to be greater than 0.5, indicating that the substance under analysis is readily biodegradable. This result could be considered desirable. Therefore, outcome was set to fulfilled and uncertainty to low. This is our overall conclusion. Uncertainty is low and outcome of this assessment is acceptable for the intended purpose. As our comment, the predictions of analogs with tertiary alcohols don't match with the experiment results. Besides that, all the predictions of the analog of the analogs without tertiary alcohol match with the experiment results. Accordingly, we have identified the reason of the inconsistencies and the overall uncertainty is known. Next, I would like to talk about the prediction checklist for the other substance. This is the result of the prediction checklist. In terms of some items, the outcome of this substance are same as the outcomes of the previous chemical. 
I'd like to explain focusing on assessment elements which has different outcomes within the previous chemical and this chemical. Items 3.1 through 3.6 are used to evaluate the reliability of the prediction from several perspectives. For 3.3, it is evaluated whether the object under evaluation is within a reasonable range compared to the range defined in the training set. The prediction results for the analytes are shown on the next slide. The molecular weight of the, anal of the analyte is within the maximum and ma minimum values of the training set compounds. All structural fragments of the analyte expect, except sulfonic acid are included in the 42 structure fragments defined based on the training set. Sulfonic acid is not included in the fragment library, but several substances containing sulfonic acid are included in the training set. This is the biodegradability results of experiment values and borrowing predictions for the target chemical and analogs. For the, ta for the target chemical, Biorin 5 predicts 0.60 and Biorin 6 predicts 0.54, which are within the range of the training set compound. As for analogs, the measured BOD degradability of the analogs were all over 60% and all analogs were predicted to be readily degradable by the BioWay model. Therefore, for 3.3 and 3.4, we set for field as outcomes and low as uncertainties. For 3.6, the item evaluates the consistency of information when multiple module predictions are used to predict the property of interest and when additional information on the same or related properties such as measured values are used. For the substance analyzed in this study, the BOD experimental data according to OECD 301C is 3%, which is not really biodegradable and is contrary to the predicted results. On the other hand, because several experimental data like OECD test guideline 313 and 302B and 310, we concluded not fulfilled as outcome and high as uncertainty. About 4.3, this item checks whether the predictions are within the range of the threshold and at the required level of confidence especially when a threshold exists in the regulation. Biolvin 5 estimated 0.60 as a probability and Biolvin 6 estimated 0.54. Both models estimated probabilities greater than 0.5, which means that the substance is judged to be biodegradable immediately. However, the probability is close to 0.5, which is not sufficiently reliable. Hence, the outcome was set to fulfilled and uncertainty to high. This is our overall conclusion. For uncertainty, in terms of all the analogs, the prediction results match with the experiment results. While in terms of substance under analysis, the prediction results don't match with the experiment result. Moreover, the probabilities of prediction results are close to 0.5, so there is not a sufficient level of confidence. That is the reason why we concluded high as uncertainty. And outcome of the assessment is not acceptable for the intended purpose there is a lack of information to judge the biodegradation of the substance under analysis from the results. This is our summary based on our conducted QAF examples. From the model checklist, it was confirmed that bioing can be used 
without any issues to comply with regulations under CSCL. In risk assessment under CSCL, it is necessary to externally demonstrate the validity of QSA predictions. We found the model checklist and prediction checklist to be useful in this context. Furthermore, in actual risk assessments, many cases involve substances with no measured values. It was very useful to learn that the prediction checklist can efficiently evaluate both measured and unmeasured substances. That brings us to the end of my presentation. I'm thankful for allowing us to showcase our work. And I hope you've learned something about QAF. Thank you for your attention.